bodies. While many of you may feel uncomfortable discussing some of your body's parts and functions, you need to keep in mind one thing. We all have one. At birth, we're given one of two default models that are pretty different in both appearance and function. The only problem is, regardless of whether you're a boy or a girl, your body didn't come with an instruction manual, and it's perfectly natural to wonder if what you have is normal. Here's some good news. This is the Body Basics for Tweens and Teens. Hello and welcome to my channel, where we share videos about all things puberty. From topics like this one, such as the Teen Brain Explained or How to Handle Peer Pressure. If you're interested in receiving our weekly video updates, then hit the like button and subscribe. Now let's jump straight in. Despite the differences between males and females, we have a lot in common. Two arms, two legs, hopefully ten fingers and toes, we're all human after all. What we're going to discuss today are the parts of our bodies that aren't entirely on display, namely the reproductive system. Some reproductive system changes become apparent during puberty, while other changes happen on the inside, and you can't see them, but they're equally as important. These changes happen gradually, and over time between the ages of 8 to 13 for girls and 10 to 14 for boys. So what is a reproductive system? It's the parts of your body that are changing most during puberty. Changes in your reproductive system are a sure sign that you've reached puberty. The reproductive system also involves the organs that are used for sex and making babies. Here are some facts about changes in puberty and how they differ in boys and girls. First up, let's take a look at the boys. On the outside, you can tell a boy from his genitals, namely the penis and scrotum. For some reason, we guys get hung up on size, appearance, and even hairstyle. But the truth is, penises come in all shapes and sizes. Long, short, skinny, circumcised, uncircumcised. No two penises are the same. So just remember that if it's working correctly, you've got nothing to worry about. Is the function of the penis. The penis has two jobs. One you figure out pretty early, and that's peeing. The second job comes a little later in life when you're finished going through puberty, and that's sex. The penis becomes engorged in blood when aroused, stiffens, and ejaculates semen into the hopes of fertilizing an egg. The scrotum hangs below the penis, made up of a large sack of skin that holds the testicles. They dangle several inches below the body to keep the testicles at the perfect temperature. So what do the testicles do? Think of your testicles like tiny DNA factories, pumping out millions of your sperm cells every hour. Each sperm cell contains exactly half the genetic code to make a new human being. Sitting on top of the testicles is the epididymis, a long, winding tube where sperm is stored for when it's needed. From there, sperm travel up another tube called the vas deferens, where it joins the urethra for a hasty exit. Now, the urethra is also the hole we pee out of, but don't worry, they never mix. When the penis is erect, the part of the urethra that connects to the bladder gets closed off. To make sure the sperm have enough fluid, nutrients, and energy for their long journey, the prostate and seminal vesicle are made for just that purpose. In addition to the penis, testicles, and scrotal sac growth, other physical puberty changes in boys involve pubic hair, a thinning and reddening of the scrotum, hair in the armpits on the face, arms, and legs, voice changes, and changes in body shape, body proportions, muscle mass, and appearance. So that's enough of the boys. How about the girls? With clothes on, the most obvious and noticeable thing that separates the boys from the girls is breasts. They often begin developing at the start of puberty and continue into your late teens. When it comes to female genitalia, it's probably one of the most misunderstood parts of the human body, even by girls themselves. Many people call the whole area the vagina, but several distinct regions perform different functions in this part of your body. Everything you can see on the outside is actually called a vulva, which consists of the labia, or protective flaps covering the vagina, the urethra for urinating, a sensory organ called the clitoris, and the vaginal opening. The vagina actually refers to the canal inside you, not the hole itself. Inside, you have a complex network of reproductive organs that work together to make pregnancy possible. Paired ovaries produce eggs, or the female equivalent of sperm cells. But just like with boys, they contain half the genetic information required for a brand new person. 
An egg travels once every 28 days down a pair of canals called the fallopian tubes until they reach the sizable uterine cavity. It's here that this egg waits for a sperm cell to fertilize it for pregnancy to begin. If fertilization happens, the egg and sperm stick to the uterus wall and begin growing into a baby. If no fertilization occurs, the unused egg and parts of the thickened uterus wall are expelled out of the vagina as a period. The most common signs of puberty in girls involve breast growth, pubic hair, their first period, hair in the armpits, arms, and legs, increase in body fat, oilier skin and hair, and changes in body shape, such as widening hips. But more about puberty changes next time. And that's all we have time for today. I hope you now have a better understanding of this important part of the body you were born with. If you have any suggestions for part two or have any questions that you're too scared to ask your friends or family, please let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please leave us a like and share it with anyone you think may be interested in this topic. Until next time, thanks for watching.